Oh, hey, Dell. Oh, we, we got a guest today. You're the a guy special guy? guest or just a regular guest? Oh, he says he's really special. Um, okay. Who? You're breaking up, Dell. Meet, meet, I think we're getting meathead. They're mulling the family. Yeah. Is it the meat? Is the, his real name is uh, Mike? I think. Mike. Mike. Mike Reiner. Mike? No, Mike and the mechanics. <laughs> oh, Rob Reiner. Oh. I think he's breaking up. It's hard to hear. Breaking up is hard. You know, to it's do. hard to do. <laughs> breaking up is hard. Someone did. Oh, oh, bye, Dell. Thanks, love you. Love you. <laughs> Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy Meathead, yeah. It's pretty good that he was able to get Meathead to come join us. I don't yeah. think so. I don't like the guy. Yeah, no. I mean, you, you two, you two have fun with that guy. Well, you, you, you said he was dead from the neck up, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Archie said that. Oh, really? Yeah, Archie. Archie said, said he said from the neck up. He said, he says Meathead dead from the neck up. I, I was wondering where that came from. You went on his Twitter and was like, you really are dead from the neck up. I'm like, what? where did that come from? Why did you say that? You don't want me to start on that. No, not at all. Then again, Archie also said, boil the weakling millipede. I don't know what the hell you yeah, know. Boil the weakling <laughs> millipede, which makes me sad. It's like, what, what did the weak millipede ever do? Yeah. <laughs> now you guys sang that last week. No, I stayed away from the weakling millipede line last week. I was getting to the rest. No, but you guys sang the All in the Family theme last week, remember? But we sang it different, where I did uh, Edith's lines and, and Allie did Archie's lines. Yeah. So that really made, it, it made it interesting, because I did I, I imitated Archie doing Edith's. Never, never mind. Allie who, 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 who. <laughs> huh? Hey! What? This is the wrong channel. Really? It is. Yeah. Episode one nine three. One nine three. Yay. I like to put a. I like to put a an extra nine in there to make it a year. Oh, you know, okay. And compare it, compare it to music. And I don't know what came out in ninety three. Did anything come out that year? Oh, I was thinking nineteen thirty nine. George Takei. <laughs> that was, that was funny. <laughs> Never mind. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Oh, okay. 19, yeah, you have to listen to Big Bob's Memory Lane show. Remember this song from 1939? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy for you. Crazy for you. That's how I'm feeling about you. That's it, like 33 and a third in general. Yeah. Hey, rookie, watch me pull a meathead out of my ass. Are you going to tell him that when he gets here? You know? Yeah. Hey, meathead, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you I'll get here. First thing I want to tell him is shut up, you. Now, how come you had Dingbat and Meathead, but uh, he just called Gloria? He, didn't he call her some kind of uh, dirt, dirgatory? No, he called her baby girl. Baby yeah. Goyle. Baby Goyle. Well, he didn't hate her as much as the rest yeah, of well, That was his but daughter. That's what he actually liked, I think. Yeah, but she's the one that brought Meathead into the house. That was his daughter, though. He's you can, you can forgive your daughter, you know, mostly than you can anybody else. So when's Rob, what's this Meathead going to show up? I don't know. Any, I expect him any time now. So we'll just wait. And enjoy this music from High Energy Radio. He fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, the phone's ringing again. I wonder who, oh. who it could be. Maybe it's, it's uh, yeah, never mind. Well, answer it. You answer it. You answer it. All right, I'll answer it. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hey. I don't, uh, how's it going? I don't this sound is, like me. Yes, sir. Uh, why don't you yes, introduce sir. yourself to all of our listeners? Or we should, that's rude. Listener, introduce him. This is uh, yeah. Meathead from all the... No, it's, 
That's not. That it's, it's not well, it wasn't. It wasn't meathead. It's just uh, I, I played meat in a series of films. Oh wait, uh, wait, wait called, a second! Uh, you you played meat from Forky's. Yeah, that's right. That's me, man. All right. Yeah. A lot funnier yeah. than meathead. A formal introduction, Steve. That's uh, Tony Ganyus. Yeah. Tony Ganyus joining us. Yeah. Yes. That's me. That's a heck of a lot better than who we thought was going to be on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'm impressed, or maybe maybe I shouldn't be impressed. I don't know. I gotta so. say, I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of this. They made it. It's like one of the classic movies, Porky's. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's uh, To me, it's up there with Gone with the Wind and stuff. Uh, okay. Although All right. Say, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that, that wasn't. The idea I got when uh, we first made it, but if you say so, who am I to argue? Well, I was at a very tender age when I watched it. I, I was right. pretty, I was pretty young, and it was actually a bad influence on me because uh, I ended up like sticking my face in a bowl of chili because it looked really cool when you did it. <laughs> and you know what? I think that was fake chili because you didn't run out going. Ah! <laughs> no, no, that was that was that was real stuff, man. They were they were they weren't sophisticated or wealthy enough to have like stunt chili, man. That was the real the real stuff. They just oh, put it in a dish and they stuck my face in it. You sure it tastes like shit. Oh, it's getting your eyes like it did me because I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget it either. It was special. And then the, the guy that was pulling out the like uh, all the hairs in the back of my head, lifting my my. Uh, my face out of the dish. That was that was that was special too. Gee, uh, I've never seen anybody drown in a bowl of chili before. <laughs> Me neither. I wouldn't even know how to fill out the forms on that. Yeah, you're right. It'd be a lot of hassle. I guess we better save him. I, I wish that you would all visit my cartoon world sometime. Maybe you could make like a cartoon called Porky's Babies. Steve had that idea. <laughs> yeah, I had that well, idea to make Porky's Babies, you know. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to hear. <laughs> Porky's Babies? I don't yeah. know. That sounds kind of strange, man. What would, it, what would they do? Like elementary well, school if kids. If they see girls, they'd just be like, ooh, girls. Yeah. You know, so you couldn't really have anything. Yeah, but they'd still be running around naked all the damn time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, one thing you discover when you're in uh, a film like that is like being naked on a set really sucks. Yeah. Uh, not not a whole lot of fun. Ask about that, there's, a, there's a lot of that. I'm sure they told you beforehand you probably had to sign yell yeah, because I wasn't around when the band signed the no nudity uh, just, you know, clause. <laughs> so I'm the only well, one. That... I don't think anybody knew how to write, so they wouldn't have given us anything <laughs> that we had to sign. Uh, all I knew is that uh, they. You know, uh, we were in a place and, uh, you know, okay, we had to be naked and like, you, you kind of discovered it like you're sitting on somebody's keys and all that kind of shit. Then oh, no. You also have a whole lot of friends that you never had before. Like, you could be around a bunch of people that would never ever talk to you on the set. Not yeah. everybody wants to talk to you. I, I don't understand why. I never understood that. Oh, my. <gasps> oh, well, you know, uh, being naked sucks. It really does. It's, it's, yeah. Not much fun. Well, at least at least not for me. I didn't really have. Uh... At least, no, man. You know, I think I don't know if Pee Wee got the worst of it. So uh, that last movie, I, I don't know. The first, never mind. I, but yeah, I can imagine. What What about your folks? Did your folks like see it at the theater? And then it's just like, the well, other? you know, uh, my mom saw it and uh, at the theater. Uh, I I don't know about my dad uh, about the if he, uh, you know where he saw the first one. I just can't. Picture him going into the theater to see this. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, the Wanderers, yeah, my first film, but uh, Porky's no. Um, my mom was it was uh, you know she was embarrassed at uh, things. You know she hadn't really been in the regular movies in a long time, so things changed quite a bit. And it's not that bad. Uh, you know, uh, it's just gets uh, weird when you're walking down the street and some asshole goes. Hey man, why do they call you meat? You know, and like you would your mother, it's not, you know, like you can't really say what you want to say, you know. Yeah. Oh, so, right. My mother would look at me and go, "What is? What is she talking about? What does he mean by that?" I don't know. Mom, search me, you know. So. Oh, it's because, <laughs> Mom, it's because it's because they they dunk my face in a bowl of chili. That's yeah. where I got the nickname. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't get that. Well, they just could have, couldn't have put some beans in the dish, man. Like who would have known, you know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But no, no, that was the real <laughs> stuff. And then, what I thought was kind of cool, it, it looked like the whole cast, like you had known each other for a long time because you got along so well. At least that's, you know. Well, we, we, uh, we lived in a house, uh, in Miami Beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we came down there, they, 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 um, they put us in a Howard Johnson. And mm-hmm. what we did immediately was look for a, a house. So all of us lived in this big house right on the beach. Mm-hmm. And we were down there like a month doing the rehearsals before we actually started filming. So by that time, everybody pretty much got to know everybody else really well. Mm. And we were very, very different. You know, like all of us were completely different. There was, uh, like as far as personalities, uh, you know, backgrounds, things like that. We were completely different. But on some level, uh, we really got a kick out of each other. Yeah. You know? I mean, and it showed. That's, uh, that's the chemistry. It's like, you just like, I don't know. This guy's from here, you know, and he's from, he does this, and this is his background. I don't really know much about that, but I just know, you know, I like this guy. I, I get a real kick out of him. Yeah. And that's built on screen. Do you still hang out with any of them? Yeah, well, we were, we were about to do a, a movie called uh, Daddy's Girl, mm-hmm. which uh, we raised part of the money for, uh, and, but... We had it about two years ago. The financing, uh, we, we, we eventually would, would lose the financing, but, um, the movie was, uh, the actors, not the, not the, not the Porky's characters, but mm. the actors as a bunch of older guys that have, that are single parents to a really bad daughters mm. that pay them back for all the philandering and all the shit they did when they were young. That's yeah. what, that's what Denver Girls is. Yes. Okay. So, so it's not like a period piece that would be taking place. Now. No, no, no. That's uh, current. That's uh, that, mm-hmm. that would be current. That that wouldn't wouldn't be a period piece. It would be. Uh, it has nothing to do. The characters that we uh, were to play in Daddy's Girls have nothing to do with the characters we played in uh, Porky's. They're mm-hmm. completely original characters. So are you still trying to get financing, or are you taking donations and stuff? Well, we had it. Well, <laughs> you mean doing like a Kickstarter thing? No, I don't yeah. think that'll that'll do. No. Uh, I don't think that'll really work. It's, it's, you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of pricey, uh, you know, to, to, to make the film. And we got mm. two thirds of the financing. I had, I had, I had thought about that, but I just think there's, uh, maybe a little bit too much to it. That's, what is uh, that no thing problem, they do on? They, they have a whole website. It's called Go Fuck Me or something, isn't it? Tell <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Go, go find but that's the shit, man. I mean, you know, it's a whole lot of shit. You know, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you know, come up with prizes for people and uh, all this other stuff. And uh, I, I don't know. You got to keep making videos and all this. It's, it's, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a lot, a lot harder than it seems. Oh, I know. Yeah. What about uh? They made one a few years ago and. I can't find anything about it. They tried to make another Porky's, and it's called Pimpin' the Pee Wee or something. Pimpin' Pee Wee. Pimpin' Pee Wee. No, what that what, no, what that actually was was they, they you see uh, um, the person that owns the from what I understand the person that owns the rights to Porky's right now currently is uh, Howard Stern. Yeah. Uh, he was supposed to remake the film, and uh, I I don't know why he has done it. Um, you know, but. Uh, there was another company that represented the original people that had the rights to the film. And like part of the agreement between them and somebody else that was that they had to come up with a, a porky steam film of that would, the, the budget would be no less than 10 million bucks mm. to retain the rights. So wow. they cranked out this thing, uh, what 10 million bucks these days for a movie is, is not, you know, a whole lot of money. I'm not yeah. saying that that's not a lot of money, but for, in, you know, in, uh, you know, relative terms, the amount of films cost these days, that's not very much. So this thing costs like a million bucks and it like really sucked. So they couldn't get distribution for it. And there was a lawsuit, you know, mm-hmm. and a settlement. And, uh, from what I understand uh, now, like I say, uh, Howard Stern owns the rights. Support these to, mm. to remake it or you know do whatever he wants with it. That's up to I him. I thought he'd be way too de- goody two shoes to do something, <laughs> aren't you? 
Yeah. Howard Stern is he good? Well, I, I just, from what I understand, he's he's a he's a he's a fan of the movie. He likes the film, from what I understand. Yeah. So I guess he wants his shot at making making you know his own version of it. You know. Okay. And uh, that would be interesting. I'm a leery about reboots because it seems like Hollywood sometimes don't get it right. You know, they, well, you know, they you're right. I, I, you know, I, I have a tendency to to agree with you. I don't mm-hmm. think you should remake a movie unless uh, you could substantially improve on the original. Yeah. Like when um, Cecil B. DeMille directed uh, Ben Hur. You know, it was originally black and white. It was silent. So what did they do? They they came along with color, fancy cameras, sound, and yeah. it was better. You know, mm-hmm. but the the last one they did, the last remake they did of Ben Hur, man, that. That suck fucking moose dick, man. That was awful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the one, you know? the one from last last year in your time. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I saw that. Yeah. Um, so they, I, I'm curious. Um, I I ask this question: What you think of Porky's? Because one time I was at a Q and A with Mickey Dolans, and I was okay, wanting from, to, from, uh, from uh, the monkeys. Yes. From uh, the monkeys, and I was wanting to ask him questions about the monkeys. And somebody asked him one question. He says, "Oh, that music was just for ten year old girls, twelve year old girls." And he just threw it all away. And I'm like, "What the hell am I here for? You know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you want? I, I, what are we, I'm far away, man. I'll, I'll answer anything I can. If you have a question about it, if no matter how uh, you know, like lame the question is, I'll answer. Go ahead, man. Oh, I'm good at lame. Okay, I'm just curious. I, I think it's a, a really cool film. I, I think, like I said, it really had an effect on me. I don't know if it, yeah. that's a good or bad thing. I love the movie. I lo- It was one of the few movies I've seen, the only movie I've ever seen, that's a comedy where they put a little drama in it and it worked. Because yeah. most of the time I hate when they mix drama and special stuff into comedies. But for some reason it just all worked. And uh, I was just curious what you thought of it. Well, I think that the reason it worked is because uh, what people got out of the drama part of it was um, that the characters really cared about each other. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't just a bunch of guys and you know and a bunch of fart jokes and shit like that. These guys really cared about each other. Yeah. So as long as you had that going and it slipped in, in such a way that the audience isn't really aware of it, that that. Uh, Filmmaker, but in that in this case Bob Clark, the director, who was a, mm. an incredible an incredible director, mm. uh, was doing this. You don't realize it, and because you accept this on some level that the characters care about each other, that gives the filmmaker free license to throw in any kind of crazy ass, stupid bullshit you can imagine, and it's all it's all acceptable. Well, yeah, it's yeah. like that you know? scene that scene at the end. Uh, spoilers, if people are. It's toward toward the end when uh, Tim, uh, you know, his dad is is giving Schwartz a hard time, and then Tim pushes him right. out of the way and gets between them. That was an right. epic moment. I put yeah. that up there with like it's a wonderful life stuff. It's stuff that I think of outside the film. It's like, wow, that was cool. Oh, yeah, that's you know? that's a perfect example of it. But the thing is, if you didn't have stuff like that in the movie. It'd be just a bunch of fart jokes, people doing mm. stupid shit. And it's like, eventually, you get kind of tired of it. It's like you have, if you see a movie, and it's just one unending uh, fight, one unending you know, v- uh, violence, people beating each other up, cutting each other up with chainsaws. Yeah. After like a few minutes, you become desensitized, and you don't really care anymore. You don't really pay attention, mm. you know? But exactly. because the characters cared about each other, and you really felt that, and it was very, very subtle how it was introduced to the audience, you... It, 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 it works better. You know the characters care about each other, and you can accept all of the crazy bullshit that's going on because of that one thing. And I think you hit the key. I'm sorry, Steve. I was, I was just going to say, the movies you see today with kids, its it, you don't really see that drama. All you see is them spending the whole movie just trying to get laid. Well, I think they're, you know, I mean, this is just my opinion, but I think they're, uh, they're missing the boat. If you don't have a way that the audience can see that the characters care about each other. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's just a bunch of fart jokes. So it's like, well, what did you do that, you know, somebody else didn't do? Oh, we did a, a, you know, something like this with a, you know, some naked chick running down the street, you know, some kind of thing like that. And it's like, yeah, okay. But Mm -hmm. to have um, stuff like that in the movies now, I mean, you got to give people something that they can't get on the Internet for free. Right. You know, why should I go and pay pay money to see this crap? I could see the most, you know, disgusting shit you can imagine on the Internet. So what do I got to pay to see your shit? No, no, seriously. I mean, I mean, yeah. ask yourself a question. 
if there's nothing more to this movie than a bunch of filthy shit, well, what do I got to pay for that for? I can see it for free. Exactly. It's like, yeah. And, 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 and like for comedy, the there was some pretty good comedy in that. The comedy was pretty good. I mean, uh, some of the stuff didn't work, like from the original script. And Bob Clark, the director, he he it was his baby. He had the idea of doing a movie about his childhood. He grew up in uh, South Florida in the middle fifties, and this is his his story, really. And we you didn't know that. I mean, we can't say this. I I, I can't say this. I, I don't know if I'm right, but it seemed to us that like when we asked Bob about the movie and the original characters, he he said that all the characters except one were real people, and that character that, that was not real was my character. Because you could, if you looked at the movie, my character wasn't involved in the plot at all. You could have removed my character from that film completely, and it would have still worked. It, my character was completely superfluous. So Yeah, but in the third movie, you were the star. You had the yeah. lead in that. Yeah, that's only because the second movie, like, like, they, like they were prepared... They had the first movie. Bob had it for a while. You know, he had it since the 70s and he, the mid 70s, and he kind of peddled it around and like nobody paid any attention to it. And then people looked at it and they went, oh my God, this is filthy. And, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. But the guy that's saying that, he's out there like, you know, I don't know, sniffing little girls' bicycle seats. But he looks at the script and goes, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God, oh, oh, you know, that's what you get, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so Bob, uh, the way the movie gets finance, got financed was weird. The producer, a guy named Don uh, uh, Carmody, actually paid for the movie the first like couple of weeks of shooting. He paid for it with, with a credit card. Oh, wow. And he got like a massive credit card bill from it. Wow. You know, and the movie was going along. And then like as the movie was being filmed, the studio picked it up to distribute it like Fox. And the reason Fox distributed it is uh, you guys have all seen The Godfather, right? Yeah. Okay. You remember the guy that was in bed with uh, with uh, the the horse's head a guy named yeah. John, John Marley? Oh yeah. And that guy was a friend of Bob Clark's. He took the project to Marvin Davis, who was the who owned Fox Fox Studios. They used to play poker, mm. and he, he threw the whole idea at him and everything. And and, and you know Marvin Davis pay, you know paid attention to him, and that's how Forky's got a distribution deal because mm-hmm. of John Marley, the guy in. Uh, the Godfather that woke up with a horse's head in his bed, and so nice. it, like this this movie as like as it was being made, it was it was almost like a like it, it started out as almost a, a guerrilla shoot, mm. then it was like an indie, like a regular indie, then it became a studio film by the end. Nice. And I think that one of the movies one of the reasons that the movie like like the second movie wasn't that good, uh, you know, was that it, it's like. They didn't have an idea past the success of the first movie. In other words, yeah, like, okay, I, this is a big, big hit. Now what? Well, you know what? We we haven't we haven't thought that far ahead. What do we do now? Got me. Well, so I, they're I going. Bob didn't write the the second one. So they got a bunch of guys in a room and they're telling us, okay, well, uh, tell us like funny shit from when you guys were in high school. And I remember I remember hearing it. I got like a knot in my stomach. I'm like, oh, oh boy, they don't have a fucking clue. You know, because that's the, <laughs> none of that shit's funny, man. Like you have to know the people. You have to be there. You know, I can tell you a funny story about a bunch of people you don't know. To me, it's hysterical. But to somebody else, it's like, oh, okay. You know, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, it's like so, you, because they, huh? I, I had a problem with it being the next day. You know, Mickey doesn't have a scratch on him now. Yeah, it's like can't be the next. No, but, but, okay, but wait now, wait now. Now, here, now people, people fucking do this. I, I just okay. <laughs> you're right. Well, look. I was at a a Q and A Q&A for the movie The Wanderers a couple of months ago uh, in uh, in New York, yeah. and um, I'm, I'm standing there in front of a, an audience, and people are asking me questions about the film. And a grown man, uh, he raises his hand, and he says to me, uh, "What what would happen?" He goes, uh, "If your character and Tara, who's this like really big, big, powerful guy, were to get into a fight, who would win?" <laughs> so, well, sir, you do realize that these are both fictional characters, right? <laughs> it's not like he's like a 10 year old kid, you know? This is a man in his like early 50s. I go, well, on what basis? Uh, like, uh, uh, by what criteria do you want me to judge the fighting prowess of these two fictitious characters? <laughs> he just didn't see me. Maybe he didn't know what I meant. I don't know. But, but I mean, if, like, if you start doing that, like, okay, look, this is fucking, it's fucking porkies, man. We're not trying to do like, uh, 
some historical epic where everything checks out. Okay, he didn't have the the things on his face. Yeah, well, and like well, when Jackie was, Chan did Rumble in the Bronx. There's this sudden mountain range in the Bronx that nobody's ever seen before. You know, <laughs> it's shining like fucking Vancouver. But it's it's, it's you got to well, you got to cut know, not, for slack with shit like that, man. You know, I'm not that I'm not that detail oriented. It just made me think that maybe they slapped that next day on at the last minute, and yeah. maybe it wasn't filmed. It's supposed yeah, to. Yeah, somebody somebody stepped on their dick. They didn't see the they didn't see <laughs> the the movie. That's that's simple. You know, somebody made a mistake. That's yeah. pretty simple. It happens all the time. Uh, Nick. Oh, you should see him. I messed him up good. I got the pigs too. Come on, step aside. Look out. I think he's got some broken ribs. Maybe a collapsed lung. Billy, get an ambulance. So if you, you know, you, you, there may have been a few inconsistencies in uh, some of the things you saw in the second movie, but, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't, it was clearly not as good as the first one. Oh, yeah. Full often hast thou heard my moans. <laughs> Forget, huh? Anthony, can you get your voice a little higher? Huh? Well, he's pretending to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I like Helen. Helen me. Uh, this, no, this, this just ain't gonna work, okay? I, mean, I, I just got a, a, a naturally deep voice, you know? I mean, uh, I just... Just naturally got a man's voice. Uh, uh, <laughs> and the third one was a bit better than the second one, but uh, it was still by then when we were like uh, forty, I think. So <laughs> I got mean, I got a, I got yeah, a kick know. out of that. I got a kick out of the second one with Kaki Hunter doing the uh, the big boob girl. I mean, I just I was rolling in the aisles. <laughs> I mean, it's got it's got its funny moments, yeah. but the, but the thing is, is that it was kind of slapped together, and you know, this was Bob's baby. You know, the original one was Bob's baby. He carried it around with him, and he, you know, he he, he nurtured the thing for years, and yeah. they kept telling him, "Oh, you can't make this; it's too filthy." When the the first edited version of Porky's came out before it was released in theaters, mm. the film was actually rated X. Oh, really? Wow. wow. Yeah, it's something not many people know. By the standards, now, now these are by, uh, uh, you know, 1980 standards. Yeah. Today the would film was rated be, at. Oh, today sorry, would probably, uh, uh, 1981. Today standards. would probably be PG or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's nothing. It's like, but, but yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's not a big deal. Well, it wouldn't be PG because you saw, Damn. you know, I mean, there's some uh, extensive <laughs> nudity, you know, kind of uh, pretty... Heavy duty shit and, yeah, and, and, and uh, you know they, they phone nudity and yeah. uh, they didn't you, you know it uh, it was rated X so yeah. Bob had to cut a bunch of stuff out of it and uh, and fix it up and then it could be it could get a a wide release like a regular wide release because it wouldn't have made any money as a as a as a porno movie. Yeah. Oh, so there's no like director's cut room or else. Well, I, you know what? I don't know if that if there was ever a director's cut. Uh, it uh, the knowledge of that died with Bob. We don't know. Which is really you know, that's that's what I didn't want to bring up, but how sad and it made me wonder what it was like working with him because to me, you know, Porky's is one of my favorite movies, yeah. probably in my top ten. And another film in my top ten is A Christmas Story, which was like the next year. And Bob Clark too. It's like this guy was a genius. Yeah, you know, he also something else that people don't know about Bob is that Bob was the creator of the slasher film. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I think I think don't don't hold me to this, but I think the first slasher film was was it Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things? Mm. Or it's got another title. But he did, maybe if I'm wrong, it's another one of his early titles from the mid-70s. But he did make the first slasher film. Bob Clark did it before mm. anybody else did. Wow. So Bob, was, uh, Bob was a genius. He really was. He just... Uh, yeah, wide he range of talent. Through. He did. He, he, yeah. he had a, a, a really good sense of humor, too. Oh, yeah. Sounds like so, it. Um, well, if he was yeah. doing that kind of stuff as a kid that was in Porky's, yeah, <laughs> you know. 
That is really funny. Oh, he told he told us all kinds of shit that they were doing that you, that you couldn't put in the you couldn't put in the film. But uh, oh, no. we reasoned it out. We we figured out Bob. We figured out Bob was Pee Wee. That's what we think. That's now, what I Bob thought. Bob denied it. Yeah, he, he really denied it. But but we thought Bob was Pee Wee. So <laughs> he went, no, 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 no. You guys, you guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. But no, that's what we, <laughs> we that's what we thought. Did he do a cameo in there? Because he did a cameo in Christmas Story. He did, he did a cameo in the second movie where he was running around uh, naked. <laughs> yeah, all Bob was, you know, Bob was in it. He just, you know, he went, you know, he was running around naked. Was I, he one I, of the clans? You know. Yes, he was. One of the clans. One okay. of the clans. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I have to keep an eye over that next time. <laughs> didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, guy, you know, we, we, didn't know what think, uh, we didn't know what he was going to be. You know, like we're standing around and then you see Bob, uh, you know, he's naked. And we're going like, what the, what the fuck <laughs> is he doing? <laughs> but yeah. Bob was ready. You know, he was, he, you know, he was ready to get in there and mix it up with everybody. Oh, you yeah. Know? You know, I'll tell you, uh, I wish I... I could have seen some bloopers from that because I'll bet you like the um, office scene with uh, Beulah Ballbricker and the principal and the two coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that that in my opinion, that's the funny. In my opinion, that's the funniest scene. It in the is. Movie. Oh I mean, my god! And uh, Nancy Parsons, yeah. God love her. She seems like a nice lady, and she did that she so well. Was, uh, she was a wonderful person. I. Yeah. I uh, I liked her a lot. I used to I used to hang out and smoke with her. You know, like if there was something going on, me and her would sit and have a cigarette and we'd oh, wow. bullshit about stuff. And she <laughs> she was just so unlike what you saw in the movie. Like yeah. she always would play these characters in films that were like these bitchy, nasty, evil women, yeah. but she was completely the opposite of that. Oh, she yeah. was just a really sweet person. Bob had a really good cast. Yeah, it is a great, you know? great cast. Yeah, yeah great cast. I- I loved in the third one the backstory. Spoiler alert! You know when when they the matchmaker scene with her. Oh yeah. You know it's like finally kind of <laughs> you know it's really nice. Mila got some. Well, you know, uh, the, the, the the guy that directed the third one was uh, Jimmy Jimmy Comack. He was uh, the guy that um, produced uh, Welcome Back, Cotter. and he Ooh. was. Uh, you guys know him from if you guys remember the uh, of the courtship of Eddie's father. Yeah. 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 Anybody remember that? You remember the guy that was like uh, Bill Bixby's buddy? He was like a hippie guy, and he Norman. wore the. Uh, His name was Norman, bit, right? Off the moment. That's yeah. that's uh, uh, Jimmy Coleman, right? Oh, okay, that's him. Okay. He directed the movie. How so the hell we we know. we aggravated the shit out of him. We aggravated him so bad that he like during rehearsals that he like uh, he uh, he popped a blood vessel in his eye. Oh, wow! He aggravated the shit out of him. Oh, wow! Because he. He wanted to do these rehearsals. That's how he did things. But to us, it was stupid because we had already done two of these goddamn things. Oh. So what are we rehearsing? Yeah, I mean, this isn't like you know we're we're like the some royal company of British actors and we're doing like Twelfth Night and shit. This is yeah. fucking fucking fucking, <laughs> you know? Oh, oh, gee, there. Let me, you know. But anyway, he he had a very methodical way of doing things, and like we were kind of like dicks to the man. Yeah. Oh no. But he was. He was very thorough, and uh, you know, he you know he did okay. He was he was a pretty cool guy. And how I remember how I remember he was Norman on Court of his father. I have no clue. <laughs> you know, it's been years. Well, since no, no, you you you. He was he was in a lot of stuff. He was uh, he was in uh, movies. He was in uh, he was in the movie Damn Yankees. Okay. He was one of the actors, and I don't remember the character name. He was in the film yeah. Damn Damn Yankees. He was yeah. in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Then he just became a TV guy and a, and a and a producer. Yeah, I remember seeing his name as as producer in a lot of shows. I mean, oh yeah, he produced a lot of a lot yeah. of television. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so they got him, I guess, because he was used to working with uh, those guys on Welcome Back, Cotter. Maybe they mm-hmm. figured he he'd be able to you know uh, give us direction without being killed like a regular director. Like we probably <laughs> tie him yeah. up and like hang him, hang him. They find him hanging in a tree or something, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did some stupid shit. No, we we played we played a lot of practical jokes on each other and uh, some of the other cast members, like uh, not on any of the women, but um, but on like Chuck Mitchell, you know, and oh. uh, and Jimmy. We did some stuff to Jimmy, and uh, hmm. you know, we would do uh, stupid shit. And if they had a, if they had filmed that went on in that house that we all rented on the first movie. If they had filmed that stuff, it would have been way, way better than the movie. Oh, believe me. Yeah. That was, the shit that went on, you, you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't believe some of the shit that went on in that house, what we did in that I house. I can believe it. Oh. And, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, we were a bunch of young guys that they let us loose. Yeah. We had this house that was right on the beach, uh, and uh, we had a good time. Yeah, like a regular really weekend cool. at Bernie's going on. Yeah, okay. weekend at Bernie's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, listen, uh, I'll tell you something about the weekend at Bernie's. That, it, 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 I don't know what it's like now because I haven't been to Florida in a long time. I don't know if much has changed, but there were a lot of beautiful girls down there. Like in, uh, this is in um, South Beach before it was all, you know, fancy and built up like it is now. There were beautiful girls all over the place, man, oh, yeah. all over the world. And if you were dead, you could probably have gotten late, even if you were dead. That, I mean, that's all, no, I'm not yeah. it, was, it was unbelievable. If you couldn't get laid down there at that time, you you just, I mean, I don't know, just, just fucking shoot yourself. That's, you know, <laughs> that's, how, that's how amazing it was. Tell us about uh, Chuck Mitchell. Well, Chuck Mitchell was a, was a stand-up comic, and uh, he, you know, we, we would perform on... Um, cruise line stuff like that made a living doing that he got into movies and i don't know why but like we just uh, kind of had this thing you know like uh, we played practical jokes yeah on uh each other back and forth and uh you know he he uh he just did some unusual stuff <laughs> also <laughs> uh i i would do shit to him and he like he like you know cursed me out and <laughs> Nancy, uh, Nancy told me, Nancy Parsons told me that, um, you know, I think he, I think he likes you. And I go, well, why, why would you say that? Because you, 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 you pay a lot of attention to him. You may not realize it, but, you know, I would do shit like be in a hotel pool and I'd walk by and I'd go, uh, the she blows or something like that. You know what I mean? Really loud, you know? Oh. Or he'd be, uh, he'd be sitting at, a, at the table and, uh, uh, when we were eating, you know, uh, eating, eating lunch and mm. he's got a big plate of watermelon and go, Hey, Chuck, uh, I didn't realize watermelon made people fat. You know, I said shit to him like that. <laughs> <laughs> he me stuff and, oh, fuck you, you know, like that kind of shit. So he had a great sense and, of humor. You know, he had a, well, I think he was disgusted with me at one point. Yeah. You know, he just got disgusted. So he, was, he, he wasn't trying to come up with, uh, you know, creatively funny things to say. He was just telling me to go fuck myself, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, I miss him though. I miss yeah. him. He was he, he was okay. You know? yeah. was it? I, I I didn't I didn't realize that the man may have may, may have actually liked me like that. He was fond of me. I, I didn't I didn't think of it that way. Oh. But she was the one that pointed it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he did a great job of being this kind of badass without yeah. a lot of yelling and it just the way he his tone. This is under the breath. You know, you boys want. Well, he was to, a know. big he was a big man and uh, he didn't have to really Go yell down. or. He uh, demonstrated. He just pretty much had to stand there. He was, uh, had a uh, formidable physical presence. You know? I wouldn't want to. Well, it's kind of like you and the Wanderers. You beat the the crap out of those guys with the toothpicks still in your mouth. And, yeah. and you're a badass on there. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Wanderers. The Wanderers. Uh, mm. Wanderers is my favorite film. It just uh, they just re released it in December. Uh, the first time when it came out originally mm. in the spring of '79, they. The uh, exhibitors, you know, the theater owners, they thought that there would be race rats in the theater, like which is what happened with the Warrior. It mm -hmm. came out um, a couple of months before. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when the Wanderers came out, they were really, really nervous because there's a lot of racial stuff in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was in the theater two days, and they pulled it. Oh wow! And it never got the shake, or like the, the like a fair shake. So mm -hmm. this company named Kino Lorber, they they purchased the domestic rights to the film. Mm -hmm. And they re-released it in uh, theaters across the country starting in um, about the middle of uh, November of 2016. And it's in some it's in some theaters now. Mm. Still. So it got, actually, after 38 years, it got more of a release now than it ever did. Wow, that's cool. So uh, I, I'm just, to me, that movie, I, I love that movie. I'm really, mm. really proud of being, being in that movie and having to do <laughs> or anything, having anything to do with the film. I'm just very, very proud of that movie. Mm. Cool. There's a Porky's is Porky's, but the Wanderers, uh, that's that's will always be, you know, the closest to my heart. That's cool. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get seen it, uh and they also they're putting out a uh a DVD uh and a uh, a Blu ray. Like they're really doing it up right. There was a I believe a German Blu ray of the Wanderers because it's apparently very popular in Europe. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know how good it was, but this, they really went all out and they made a really good version of it. 
this company, Kino Lorber, and they just put it out. I think it came out the end of March. I'm looking forward to getting that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I've been trying. I hadn't seen it. I've been trying to watch it on YouTube. Different pieces of it because I don't know. Find it in Jones. Yeah. The Wanderers. The Wanderers was a was a funny. It was uh, it's like a seven million dollar movie. And in 1978, when it was being filmed, uh, that was a decent like for the for the type of movie it was. That was a decent budget for the type of movie it was. Uh, it wasn't like a an action extravaganza. You know what I mean? It's something like that. But for the type of movie it was, that was a decent amount of money. And uh, Oh, yeah, the, the director man. He was he. I, I had some really good luck because I got to work with some really great directors. Phil uh, Phil Coffin, guy's unbelievable. Man, he he he. Wow, that was the whole vision of Richard Price's uh, novel. Mm -hmm. His 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 vision. He's just an amazing an amazing man. So um, yeah, man. Yeah, wonders. Wonders. Yeah, I was digging what I was saying in there. It's really cool. I like that football game with the. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't want to give a bunch of stuff away. <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, that was crazy because like when we actually did that, it took a week to film that, and like people were getting sent to the hospital. Like the uh, couple of camera operators got sent to the hospital because what was difficult is uh, when the director yelled "cut," the action would continue for like sometimes like three minutes. <laughs> Five minutes and three minutes is a long, long time. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the same one. Yeah, I wouldn't want to hang for that long. Yeah, well. Leave the kid alone. Say something, man. Say something, mother. Hey, you hear me? I'm talking to you. Leave the kid alone. You know who you're talking to, asshole? Beat it. Nobody fucks with the ball <laughs> Gotcha. Oh, that movie Gone in 60 Seconds, the new one with uh, uh, Nicolas Cage. Did you see that? I only saw the original. Uh, from okay, the me too. Now, okay, okay. I've seen the original, and I've seen the other one too, but to me, I love the original. The, the, the acting in the original isn't, uh, I mean, like, uh, if Lawrence Olivier was still alive then, I don't think he'd have any of scared of, scared at it, if you get my drift from the... <laughs> Well, the first yeah, half of it was just so hard to follow. Yeah, somebody drove, and it's not edited well, but somebody drove that yellow Mustang. Who the hell drove that car, man? That was unbelievable. But you knew that somebody actually did that. It was, it's, it's not, um, like a visual yeah, effect. Yeah, there's no CG. It's real. Yeah. Somebody did. Somebody got in that car and did that driving. A real guy did that driving. Yeah, but there's like, a scene. Um, in, there's a scene in where he hits a hits a light pole, and that nearly killed him. That was an accident. And they kept it. Yeah, they, but that's going to happen. That's what I was saying about the fights. The same thing. It, it, you know, nothing's perfect, man. It's it's. But that guy, in order to drive that car, why wow, he must have been like like that guy must have been incredible to be able to do that. Yeah, he ended up you know? dying on set on his third movie. I didn't know that. I just admired the the guy's skill. And when I saw the Nicolas Cage movie, I mean, I, I realized all that's uh, a lot of it is a visual effect. You know, it's not yeah. real, so it's like, yeah, okay, you know. Mm. It's great. At least like those old movies, like some of those old Bond movies. Like what's that one where I was with, uh, with Roger Moore where somebody jumps out of a plane and mm -hmm. they have a shoot on or they don't have a shoot on. They have to take something off of. Yeah, he went and got the shoot off. Take the something off one of the actors. I think it was Moonraker. Didn't he? He took the shoot off of uh, John. Right, right. But I mean, it, it, OK, you know that it's not it's not uh, it's not, uh, you know, Roger Moore, but but. Somebody did that. You know that somebody yeah. was doing that. That's that's it's exciting. Really I mean, to me, it's like that. holy shit. You know, somebody I'm fucking did that. Like if they if they missed, they, they they'd have fucking died. You know. Yeah, I mean it was real people doing real stuff. You know, you know. All that's gone now. It's all you know CGI stuff and you know. Yeah, it I mean, is. I, a lot of it looks like dog poop. You know. But it all looks the same. A lot of that CGI stuff kind of looks the same. Like the like the. I don't know. It just has a look to it. It looks like fake in some similar yeah, way. You know, yeah. I don't know. You know what gets, <laughs> gets me? Uh, it's these uh, these big blockbuster action movies, a lot of with the superheroes. They've always uh, got some big fight scene at the end in New York where you can't tell what the heck is going on for like 10 minutes. 
because there's so many little cuts and things going on. It's like, what? The? And every movie seems to happen. Buildings falling well, over. I guess they got to try to outdo each other. What I don't get is how come, like, <clears throat> you look at some of the superheroes now, they're like, they're like, uh, they look like 12 year old kids. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, who are you here? Who are you here with, little fella? Did, did, does your mommy know you're here? You're who? Green what? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I don't get it. I saw a little dude, like, you know, some little dude, he doesn't even look like he shaves. He's, he's like a superhero. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's like I, I I like the show Flash that they have on TV now, but he looks like a, like a high school kid, you know, and it's and it's just hard to believe it. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, see, that's just it. I'm I'm with you, but some of the superheroes, like Spider Man, he was always Spider Man was a high school kid. He's yeah. supposed to be that way, mm -hmm. but not all of them are that way. I mean, some of them are actually grown up men, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's what that's what that's what we're used to when they had grown up men being superheroes. Oh yeah. yeah. Of course, like watching yeah. Happy Days back in the day, I always thought they looked like they were in their forties. <laughs> which, which one? Which one? Oh, you know, Ralph and Potsy and all those guys on Happy Days back in the seventies. You know, what's funny, I, you know, I was a teenager back then, so they they looked really old to me. <laughs> people said that about about Forky's. Like we, even when we did the first one, they were saying, "Hey, come on, man!" These guys were like, you know, I, I was the youngest. I was like twenty one yeah. when we did Porky's. But if you look at some of the high school yearbooks from back then, you got like some guys like thirteen, and he's got a full like you can see the beard shadow goes the girls, you know, right up to his eyeballs. You know, he's already going bald. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, I, the chick, she's like 13, and she's like, holy, holy shit, man. Look at the crap <laughs> on that chick. She's like, oh, holy crap. You guys might have looked older than a lot of high school kids. You weren't babies, but I can't imagine a different cast pulling that off. I mean, that that's me. That's what made it magic, you know, that and the direction. Well, thank you. That's a that's a really, really nice compliment. Thank yeah. you. You know, Sure. If the other guys could hear you, they would, they would agree. That, that's a really yeah. nice compliment. Uh, I, I think that uh, you can get other actors, you know, if Howard Stern does do it, and gee, I, he, he likes he likes Porky's. I hope I hope uh, I hope he does do it. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess they change the story. Who knows? Yeah, I just but, you know, um, I, just, I just hope they pull it off good and, and makes it and add like you said, you know, can expand on it, and make it better instead of just going backwards with it. I don't know how you well, could, though. Think, to me, it's just yeah. it's lightning in a bottle to me. I don't yeah. know what you could do to, at least the first one, I don't know what you could do to improve it. I just love it the way it, I mean, that, I that, with Bow Breaker and the, and the principal there, you know, with the tallywhacker scene, how could that be redone and made better? You just can't. Now, Mr. Carter, I know this is completely unorthodox, but I think this is the only way to find that boy. Now that penis huh. had a mole on it. I'd recognize that penis anywhere. In spite of the juvenile sneakers of some, this is a serious matter. <laughs> that, that seducer and despoiler must be stopped. He's extremely dangerous. And, Mr. Carter, I'm certain that everyone in this room knows who that is. He's a contemptible little pervert who's bound breaker. Well, I'm sorry. But I've got him now, and I'm not going to let him slip through my fingers. Okay? I don't think they would try to recreate. I mean, this is me guessing. I'm, you know, I'm not. I don't have any secret information. I don't know what anybody would want to do. I don't think they would try to recreate the movie shot by shot. I just think a writer would come in and they would just try to rewrite the movie with a basic idea. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Pee Wee, these guys are going to get their buddy laid. Yeah. Maybe a little different. Things are a little different, but that's the basic, you know. What I would find upsetting is is that they would update the movie and like try and put rap and hip hop in it. You know, oh. and, and that would just ruin it. And they've done that with other movies before. That's horrible. And I hope they make it a series. You couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't have a movie about kids nowadays. They'd just be there on their cell phones. They wouldn't be doing a damn yeah. thing. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It just be I remember I'll see it in, in, uh, in our movie, Daddy's Girls. The girls that I created, uh, they have. They don't really use cell phones, and mm -hmm. I know that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is my universe. I created it. I created the characters. They were raised by guys our age. Right. So all the stuff that we do, like gamble, drink, fight, they do it all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not like any other kids, any any kids, because you know what? I can't compete with some 
kid writer that knows about some app that like you know like tickles your nuts or some shit on the fucking cell phone. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fucking try, man. You know what I mean? So the way, you know what do my girls do? They do they do like they do uh, they do the mashed potato. Why? Because their dads play that music. You know oh, what I mean? I want to get me that app. Um, okay, well, that's what I mean. If I find it, I find it. I'll, uh, there you go. I'll let you know. <laughs> but you understand what I mean? It's just yeah, like yeah. you know, uh, you know, George Lucas. He does Star Wars. In his universe, there's sound in space. Well, in my universe, not every teenage girl is stuck to a cell phone. And- right. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that I'm glad that George Lucas didn't direct Porky's. They're at oh. the very end of it. You know, <laughs> everything's perfect, and then he puts on there. Meat was killed in a shooting. You know, and he walked into a convenience store, yeah. and Pee Wee died in a car accident. And- uh, oh, this yeah. other guy, uh, Tim, Tim was saying, like you do with, 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 with uh, 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 came back. Yeah, it works though. Look at look at Animal House. You know the yeah. Animal House? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny well, shit, it, man. That they did. Well, they did that, it funny, funny in Animal shit. House. I just hated it on American Graffiti. A spoiler alert. Yeah. I mean, I hate it because you 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 learn to like all these characters and you're rooting for them. You know, the little nerdy guy with the glasses, and then mm. at the very end, he just. He, Leave it up to our imagination, guy. You know, yeah, I didn't have to put all that in there. But the thing is, I think in a way, though, you may not like it, but I think it makes the whole the experience of the movie more real because you 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 might find out something that you don't you're not completely comfortable with about right. a character. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes it real. It's not like everybody can sail off into the sunset, marry the fucking prom queen, and sail yeah. off into the sunset. It doesn't work that way, you know. <laughs> not in real life. Yeah, but that's so, you know that's but that's my thing. It's like we watch movies to get away from real life for a little bit. Otherwise, we just watch the news. <laughs> I mean, I do. I watch it to to you know my cartoon. Paul, you know, we go we go out there and we do funny cartoon stuff. You know, yeah. I I try not to talk about people floofing. That's what dying means in my world. Floofing. Yeah. You know, I said too much. <laughs> hey, listen, man, like, my favorite movie. Um, my favorite movie, okay, it's a toss-up between uh, Jason and the Argonauts, the original one. Oh, yeah. And a movie called El Cid. I love Jason and the Argonauts. When I was a little kid, mm, okay. uh, they took me to the movies to see that, and I was, I, was, I was fascinated by it. I was just absolutely fascinated. I don't know how many times I've seen it. I, 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 yeah. Probably hundreds of times. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ray Harryhausen with the, with the stop motion. You know what? I love that better than all the damn CGI they do with the computers. I mean, you know that it's not real, and it's but like that. Some of that stuff, it just looks fucking cool. Like that that giant bronze guy and Jason of the Argonauts. That's fucking cool, man. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. that shit. I was a little kid, and um, I thought that shit was real. I really did. I thought it was real. I was yeah. staring at the screen. I would ask adults questions about that. Like, where where is that? You know, I thought that if you went there, you would see that stuff. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, how I was with Land of the Lost. Did you ever see the seventies? Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. I used to watch that too. I used to watch that too. But well, we actually you know? had on our show. We've had Wesley Yer, who played Will, on our show. He's actually oh, yeah, yeah, been yeah, in yeah. my. I don't, man, I don't know that guy. I, I don't know him, but I know who he is. Sure, I watched yeah, that show. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, the, the 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 series was awesome, but the movie was sucked. Sucked fucking big dick, man. That, <laughs> oh, movie, oh, yeah, yeah. that was fucking awesome. Oh, and, uh, that Wesley will agree. But that with movie you. was he terrible. Said that they were, he said him and, and uh, Kathy Coleman, who played Holly, had these cameos. That they didn't. Even, they they were on the cutting room floor. Didn't even make the cut. Oh yeah. He just said it was terrible. It was they, they tried they, to, they, You know, they should have at least put the put the the the, the, the original actors into it in a way that it's, that uh, the cameos were there so that it like introduces us that the show the show had fans. You know that uh, it would introduce them to the new movie. It's like they're given a. It's like the, the the original characters would be sanctioning the new movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did that right with the Brady movies. I thought they did a really good job of making it funny, but not slapping the Brady fans in the face, which is what they did with Land of the Lost. That, you know. Hey, the Brady Bunch was cool too. The Brady Bunch was a cool show, man. Now, I'm wondering if they yeah, reboot like if they reboot Porky's, whether they'd have you guys come back as cameo appearances. That'd be cool. Well, yeah, I think. They, well, I think that uh, I think they should. You know, we had one one less guy. We had one guy passed away a few years ago. Yeah, Wyatt but, Knight. I was, uh, yeah, I was, was going to bring Wyatt Knight. Yeah, I was going to bring him up. You yeah. know, I was so sad when I found out Wyatt Knight passed away. Yeah, Wyatt was Wyatt was a good guy, man. Yeah. He was a really funny guy too. Oh, he was. And. Um, Oh yeah, he was a pra- arch practical joker. I was gonna say you can just tell by the smirk on his face that he was a practical joker all the time. Oh yeah, he was so he played tricks on everybody all the time. Yeah. You know? Oh, 
He really did. He uh, he uh, he was uh, he was quite a character. Yeah. But yeah. if they did that, uh, Howard Stern, I I don't I don't know. I mean, I, that'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't understand. I I don't quite get the what, what's the what, why he hasn't done it. I, I I wonder if they're just having trouble with the script. Like maybe he wants uh, to get a script uh, that, in his opinion, is of uh, really high uh, you know quality. I guess he's got a like a mark to hit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I yeah. tell you what, his autobiography, his private parts movie was really good. I enjoyed that. I never really knew who he was before that. I didn't see. I I, I didn't. I, I didn't see it, but I know that he owned at one time. He owned the rights to um, uh, Rock and Roll High School. He was going to remake that too, oh. and that uh, that that didn't work out. The rights reverted to the original owner. Well, I I recommend. Uh, I recommend his Howard Stern's private part. I recommend <laughs> the movie because. No, I'm serious because he plays himself as a teenager. He plays himself, he, and he's very self degrading. Mm-hmm. He, he shows how he screwed up as a teenager. How he was a horrible DJ, and, and he showed it how he got fired from all these different. It was so entertaining to watch, mm-hmm. and he, he did. It was just a really great movie. It's really funny. I'll well, well, check it out. I, I, I've never seen. I, 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 I've never seen it. I just. I uh, it. All right. Hey, listen. I'll, I'll go out and uh, I'll go out and check it out. I just. Uh, I know he has. Uh, his uh, satellite radio show, which mm-hmm. is very popular. Oh yeah, and he hey, does. He still have a does he still have a show on cable like a like a TV show? I'm not sure. I watch it on YouTube. That's mm-hmm. my only yeah. form of entertainment. I can handle. Oh uh, okay, shows. yeah. He had a show for a while. Yeah. I don't know what uh, what the story was, but uh, yeah, I just think that they should, if they remake something, it should be remade because some in some way they can make it better, and it shouldn't be remade just to make it politically correct. Like look what they did with uh, you know Ghostbusters. What what was the point? Oh, of that? that was oh, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> no, that, that, that really, no, that really fucking laid there, man. That that fucking oh. fucking laid there. It was, it was awful. But they put it to make it politically correct. Yeah. So now instead of having all men, they're all women. Yeah. Well, okay, but that. What does it do for the movie? It didn't make it any funnier yeah, yeah. or any, any well, better. I, I would go that with Porky's too, because the first Porky's with Schwartz and Tim, it was a really touching, a really neat part of the story. I thought, mm-hmm. but they, it, like you kind of mentioned earlier, they weren't hitting you over the head with messages. It was just this nice kind it's of. Side story. Gotta, it's yeah. a Bob Clark script. Bob, Bob, Bob right. wrote that, and Bob had that for years. That was his. That's his. Mm-hmm. His his life as a teenager and so, growing up in South Florida. That's that all happened to Bob. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, second, I, just, I was just thinking the second, I mean, with they, they brought in the KKK and the and the whole gym full of the Native Americans, it's I, I think they're really getting a little out of hand with. It. It's, yeah. it's well, I think the movie was getting too uh, preachy, like it was trying yeah. to preach at people, and uh, you got to be yeah, you got to be careful. People want to laugh, but if you could throw in some kind of a morality play, you throw it in in a subtle way where nobody notices, and I think then you'll get away with. It. Like the audience gets it. On like a subliminal level, yeah. right? But and, well, we, when you hit people think, over the head, nobody likes that, man. They're like, "Oh yeah, okay, we get, we get what you're trying to tell us. Yeah, we get it." We're closing you down, Morris. Closing you down. On whose authority? God. The righteous laws. So say it, the shepherd. So say it, the book. And if that's not good enough, we'll take it to the principal's office. And that's kind of how the yeah, second one was. Point. Well, the first one was we found out Tim was just that way because of his dad, and he eventually stood up against his, you know, it, it kind of, yeah. had, you know. Yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. Except the mic, the mic hunt. I didn't, <laughs> did you know I did not get that when I was at the theater watching that? Oh, I was hunt. like, why is everybody in the aisles rolling? I, didn't know, I, didn't, I, I thought it, it that, didn't dawn on you know it just like it hit you you know all of a sudden no, I, like thought, I thought maybe I thought it was maybe sex oriented like maybe he was hunting for something <laughs> that might hunt. It, was, it wasn't no. until later. Yeah. I was like, oh. Oh, well, you, you were a little kid here. You know what was fucked up? It was fucked up about that movie is like we. When we were out in the swamps there, we were really out in the in the the, the fucking Everglades, yeah. man. And like water, there were like snapping turtles, water moccasins, yeah. uh, you know, alligators. I mean, we we were really and it was really fucked up where we were. And like, uh, and I know then what I know now. Uh, fuck that! I wouldn't have went in that water. You got to be nuts. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. The, Hey, listen. You think it's so it's so safe? You go in the water. I, you know, I don't see the AD in the water. You know. Yeah, I'm here in Florida, and I'm scared to death of alligators. Well, you know, 
you, you, you're in the, we, we were in the water and we're, we filmed outside of Porky's. Like we got pushed in the water mm-hmm. and we're doing a scene. Yeah. And the water's like waist deep in, in this one spot, in this little lake we were in, or a swamp, whatever the hell it was. And we're, we're sitting there with, you know, not sitting there, we're just standing there talking. It's nighttime and we see this fucking, this gator go by. It's oh. probably about six feet long. Oh no. She swam right by us. And we're like, what the fuck? Yeah, everybody's the, freaking the gators, out. The, I think they, the gators are generally not the big. I, I, I would worry more like about nice a water gators, right? They're not the ones that like bite off parts of you. They were like, they're like the nice ones that bring you coffee and shit, right? <laughs> they, get you, they, get you, they get you chicks and bring you coffee and, yeah. that, and that kind of. No, nah, no, nah, man. I don't want no gators or snapping turtles or anything. Uh, the worst, I think, was the water moccasins because those things can fucking kill you. Yeah, we yeah. were out in the middle of nowhere. Somebody got that. Uh, Bit by a water a moccasin. What would we do? What are they going to do? Like you know, medevac somebody in? I don't think so. Yeah. You know, we would just fucking. Man, I think they would have had like some medics on site. They, they got they. in the middle. Of... Man, they, when they, I was a teenager, they, I... no man, they didn't have shit like that. They had, they didn't have shit. I remember <laughs> oh, talking to the, to the first day. I go, what? You know, what would happen if we got bit by you know? Oh no no no, there's nothing like that in the water. What do you mean there's nothing <laughs> like that? What man? You would you do water them off the set? You know. I, I, I was swimming uh, near a dock. I was skinny dipping when I was a teenager, and a snapping turtle's Uh-oh. head popped out of the water like two and a half feet from me, like that thing on Star Wars and inside the sewage oh. thing that sticks out with the eye. Man, you never seen someone jump out of. You better water. be better be careful <laughs> what it snaps at, too. There. Yeah, well, I've, I heard that they don't let go until it thunders. Yeah. You, you, you know what's scary? Those alligator snapping turtles. Those things look like fucking prehistoric monsters, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> alligator snapper, snappers? Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Wake up in the morning and another night's gone. Tumble out of bed and turn the radio on. So just can't think about my day too long. Cause I think it's like the last two nights. Well, hey, this is the wrong channel, and we're pleased to have with us this time around one of the stars of the 80s trilogy films, Porky's. Welcoming Tony Gottlieb himself, who played Meat for the show. We're talking about how uh, how not only was it fun filming on location in South Florida, but some of the scary moments dealing with the elements of nature. I, I didn't, I mean, that wasn't good, and, and, and like, I don't know, I did I did another movie, uh, Continental Divide with uh, John Belushi. Okay. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. that one. Okay, did you see that thing with the elk in there? There was like a 900-pound elk in there, and I do this yeah. scene with it. And, uh, okay, I'm a kid from New York, right? I come out there, and I don't, I mean, I have an idea what an elk is. You know, I figure it's like a big deer, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, or, what do I know, you know? When I left New York, I thought, you ever see that cartoon and the New Yorker was on the cover? It shows you New York. It's got all, like, a map. <laughs> everything in the cities, and then the rest of the country, it's like nothing. <laughs> that's what, that's yeah. what I had in my head when I left when I was 19. And, uh... So I like I got this scene to do, and we're in Canyon City, Colorado, and I scene says that I grab the elk and I like uh, you know wrestle it to the ground and like you know beat the shit out of it or some stupid thing like that, right? Mm. So I don't know. I figured out ah, what the hell is an elk? It's probably like a big deer. Ah, I'll just smack it around a little bit; it'll, it'll go <laughs> down, you know. And I'm then you know watching TV. I'm watching some nature program, and there's like a a small elk. And there's a grizzly bear, like a 600 pound grizzly. And the fucking elk scoops the bear up and tosses it in the air. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> what the fuck is that? So I get down there, right? Do they have this elk and they have a guy that's like, he brought some of the animals to the set. Hmm. And I don't know if you call him a trainer or he's an animal wrangler or whatever, because I asked him, I said, hey man, let me ask you something. He's behind one of the trees, you know, out of sight. And I said, is this thing a trained elk? And he goes, no. You can't train an elk. It's stupid. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks for telling so, us. Yeah. So anyway, like the the, the the director and the cameraman, they're up on this point and they're shooting down. So, like, you know, uh, okay, I have a little microphone in my, uh, like, under my wig, and they're, they're yelling action. So the elk, he, the, the, the wrangler, like, moves the elk forward. The elk was 900 pounds and it had a, a rack that was. Longer across than the span of my arms, and I'm six four. Oh, wow. And he said the rack weighed like a hundred pounds, and the elk's coming through, it's going over this waterway thing, and it's looking at me, and I, like an idiot, run at it. <laughs> the elk just starts, it hops and starts running away. You know, so I was like, hey man, I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty fucking cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm getting like, oh yeah, I'm a badass. Come on, come on, you know. <laughs> it happened again, and the third time. 
the elk kind of got stuck in the mud. He wasn't uh, uh, he wasn't able to move his feet. Like uh, like I caught uh, I caught up to him, and the, the wrangler guy's going, "Okay." He goes, "Just stop." He goes, "Stop." He goes, "Don't turn around." He says, "Just slowly." You see, Elkin just move backwards, just walk backwards very slowly. Mm-hmm. Says, don't, don't don't turn around. And meanwhile, these guys up on this bluff there with a the camera, they're going, go get them, Tordy. You know, they got coffee up there. Don't, I don't <laughs> okay, you know, if I get fucking mold down to this goddamn thing. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is fucking stupid. If I was to do this again, there's no fucking way in hell yeah. that I would do something like that. You have to be out of your mind. I mean, th- th- if that elk got the slightest bit of a hard art for me, man, it would have made a hamburger out of me. <laughs> a it's fucking that, stupid. You know? Talk about me. You said it was kind yeah, of... Yeah, that's right. Talk about raw meat, man. Yeah. That, that would have been it. Raw meat. Yeah. And, and you yeah, are... Uh, stupid uh, shit. Huh? Canyon, Canyon City, that's where the Royal Gorge Bridge and all that is. Royal right? Gorge Bridge, exactly. That's where we go. Canyon City, Colorado. You know who, you know who, uh, who was the most famous uh, native of that little town there? Ann B. Davis. That's the lady, the actress that played Alice on uh, on Brady Bunch. She, she's from oh, that little okay. town. Oh, Ann B. Davis. Okay. And Ann B. Davis. I thought you said yeah, Ann B. Davis. She's from that little town. Yeah, she was a, she was a nice person. She was one of those what do you call it philanth not philanthropist somebody that kind of gave up her career to work in uh, bread houses you know yeah. that helped poor oh, people. Oh, Amy Davis, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. something. Sounds like sounds like she was a really nice lady, oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. she was the most famous person from that little little place there. It was just a little tiny town in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. where they had to stay. You know, like all that stuff with poisonous snakes and like uh, danger. And also, something I learned is like when a stuntman tells you something safe, I don't know, I, I just get a little nervous, you know. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. tell you, you know that, uh, yeah, you know that uh, fire escape you're going to be running down a little while? Yeah, it looks, uh, looks really rusty, man. Are you sure those bars are, uh, you know, uh, safe? Oh, no, 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 they're really good. I checked them. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you go in there, you pull, uh, the fucking thing gives way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always look to check it out yourself because, uh, you know, I mean, it's real nice to have a positive attitude, but uh, it's not too good when the, you're going down a, a fire escape on the side of a building and, like, the, the rungs are giving away, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, like, and it's a mad, 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 mad world. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a funny movie. Oh, it uh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, we talked about that yeah. one quite a bit on here in the show. One, one of my cartoons, we even parodied some, parodied, parodied some of that. Yeah. I like that guy Terry Thomas. You ever see? You ever see? Uh, it's a movie with they did with Jack Lemmon, uh, How to Murder Your Wife. Yeah, yeah, I heard of that. Yeah. yeah, I love those movies. I love those movies. Those like wacky comedies from the '60s. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me too. I they love just the can't colors. make movies like that anymore. I love I love the colors and just the, everything about it. Mm-hmm. I love just the visuals. They don't something. do that now. Like the way the color process, everything is like they they use it. Everything is like muted or like it's brown or some kind of shit. You know those old Hollywood uh, musicals? Oh yeah. And they had like these costume things. Like the colors are so vibrant, man. It looks if it's it's like uh, it's better than real life. When you look at that, it's like more like the colors are richer than, than real life. It's something that it's it's larger than life. You know, that's mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of like that. Yeah. And they wanted yeah. to get their money's worth out of the color film because it was expensive back then. Yeah. They just changed. Everything's changed the way they the way they the way they do stuff. But I wonder if you were able to do that again i mean i'm sure that they know about the color process what they use and how they got everything that way they did it for a reason even with the lighting and all that stuff yeah you know, um, they try to recreate the old film noirs and uh they weren't able to mm-hmm. at least not the way the those old directors did them so you figure they did them as b movies from like right around after world war ii till the early 50s they did a whole bunch of these movies and they were done as like really cheap films mm-hmm. And a lot of the camera techniques were created so that uh, they wouldn't have to shoot multiple takes in a scene. Mm-hmm. And everything was lit a certain way. There were every object in the room was a tone, you know, like black, gray. Everything was done in a certain way. They had to find some of those old directors mm-hmm. to ask them what, you know, how did you set this up? What did you use for this? And uh, that's really cool. I always liked those movies. Yeah, yeah, me too. Still Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Tony's all about that. Tony, uh, uh, Dick, Tony Dixon here. He he actually dresses in like forties hats and suits and stuff. Mm-hmm. We have uh, get-togethers on the Queen Mary, and uh, you know everybody wears these suits and fedoras, and it's 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 really cool.
Yeah, it's got to be well. Those those, uh, those clothes uh, look, look kind of interesting that those guys wore. Everybody everybody wore a, a hat. No men weren't considered dressed if they weren't wearing a. Uh, oh yeah, a hat. even even the bums on the street did have suit you know coats and ties on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get well dressed bums now. Now the richest guys on earth look like bums. You know, yeah. they walk around with like ripple clothes. It's a uh, it's funny. You know. Oh yeah, it is. I don't understand it, but. They, yeah, my old man always used to tell me if you, uh, you know, you uh, really need to, uh, you know, change your appearance. He says because the way you walk around, the way you dress, because you look like you look like a hoodlum. He says you look like you're gonna you're gonna take somebody's wallet. You're gonna do something. I go, yeah, but God, I'm comfortable. He goes, people people judge you by the way you 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 dress. Mm-hmm. And he says that's the first impression they have. And he says if they see you like that. Uh, you're not going to leave a favorable impression on 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 people, and he, he he was right, you know. But I couldn't, I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't do really do what he wanted. It, it, uh, <laughs> I didn't yeah, how it, many you know? of us? How many of us can? Though? But it, didn't you? Uh, did I, did I read correct? Your dad was it? Your dad pulled you out of the gym or whatever to audition for a first. Well, that was my uncle Pete. Uh, my uncle Pete um, was uh, he was a physique champion in the late fifties. Mm-hmm. He won titles all up and down the east coast in 59 he placed third in the aau mr america mm-hmm. and in the uh, AAU, uh in the uh, nava universe in, in london and uh he was mr new york city mr new york state he won you know countless titles and like uh, he was the one i was training with him in a gym in the village uh and he he just made me stop and he told me okay you know, i want you to uh, stop what you're doing and get dressed, and we're going to go someplace. And I go, but but Uncle Pete, I'm you know I'm still working here. He goes, I don't know. He says you're going to stop. And uh, some woman called the gym, and she they, they, these guys used to give me shit. The older guys, like my uncle's age, they were all his buddies. Uh, I get constant shit when I was in there. You know, like, <laughs> let's let's like fuck with the young guy. You know, like they get like a prank phone call, some some chick on the phone saying some filthy shit. You know. <laughs> so this casting lady was saying something like she was going, "Hey, how big are you?" Oh, <gasps> there we go. You know, I, I, I told lady, uh, "Yeah, I know where it is." Now. Okay, I just I just put the phone down, and walked away. So my <laughs> uncle starts talking to her. Right uh, in the fifties, my uncle he was in the Mae West show. Hmm. Mae West used to hear this uh, yeah. review of these muscle guys. My uncle was was one of those guys. He was in the show when he was like uh, he was nineteen. She picked him when he was like nineteen, hmm. and. Um, my uncle had a real heavy accent, like a very heavy Greek accent. And he, he tried out for movies and everything, but he couldn't, uh, like the accent was, always, he felt was always stopping him, you know, from, from moving on. But when that happened, he thought maybe, you know, there's an opportunity here for my nephew. Maybe he can do something that I can't. So he kind of forced me to go down there and audition. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have worked because I, I, there were, Three people on earth at the time that could have actually physically forced me to do something. <laughs> and my, you know, he was one of them. If he said whatever he said, I would just go, okay. I wouldn't argue with him. I wouldn't say a word. I would do whatever he wanted. Yeah. So, uh, I'll say he knew, you know, uh, I, I, don't know, I went in and I thought, oh, all these people are insane. There's a bunch of actors and they're, you know, they're reading sides. They're, you know, they're trying to prep before they go in. And I didn't understand that because I didn't know anything about acting. Yeah. So I'm watching these guys, and I'm going, well, these guys must be out of their minds. And Uncle Pete looks like, get the fuck out of here. And he goes, I don't know. Uncle Pete, this guy's talking to a fucking plant, man. Let's get out of here. You know? He's like, no, no, no. He says, you're going to go out there. I go, what is this? What is this? He goes, I don't know. He's like, it's some kind of commercial or something. And he goes, you know, just go in there. So they I went in there. I spoke to Phil Coughlin, and uh, he had me come back for a, a screen test. So I took a screen test with a bunch of other people. Mm-hmm that were uh, pros at this. And I, you know, I was just really fortunate that I, I got it and, uh, you know, was able to do the wanderers, but it was because my uncle, uh, my uncle pushed me, you know, and he, uh, he, you know, when he was young, he tried out for, uh, Superman. Oh, really? Yeah. The George Reeves. Well, he looked like Superman. He had black hair and he had like blue eyes, just mm-hmm. like Superman. Oh, wow. He looked just like him. He built like a brick shit house. And he, and he uh, he looked like Superman, but then he has that he has that accent. Uh, <laughs> and I oh, that, that, that that's not gonna work. That that wouldn't work. Uh, but he did do um, he did stuff on T V shows where they had like uh, you know, muscle guys, you know, they needed like a muscle guy to do something, like mm-hmm. lift a girl, that kind of stuff. He was able to do stuff like that on school. 
50s TV shows. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and um, like like me, my uncle, you know, wasn't really, uh, he didn't really dress up too too nice, you know, like just, you know, kind of wore like uh, sweat clothes, stuff like that. And, yeah, laid back. You know, we, 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 yeah, we worked on cars and like we'd get all greasy, you know, like my dad, my dad would put a suit on every day of his life, he'd have a suit on. Wow. Ooh. Nice shoes. You know, to, to my dad, like being casual was like leaving the top button of his shirt open, you know, and, yeah. not, and like not not wearing his tie, but leaving the top button of his shirt open. Oh, wow. just, <laughs> just like that, Max. Eight minutes thirty-five into the third quarter, and you walk out. Yeah, eight nine minutes, right about that. Exactly eight thirty-five with everything to play for. No, no, no. Everything to lose, Mister Suzanne. <sighs> I mean, I wanted out. One season of pro football, in no way I was going to face a second, let alone a whole career. Are you a rookie of the year? 3.4 sacks a game. I'm going now. Uh, you know, I, a lot of things just started coming together in my head, like 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 my revulsion with the whole system. How was it working with, uh, you know, Bruce J- J- Will- Will- Willis? Uh, well, Bruce he's a nice fella. I didn't, I didn't spend a whole lot of time around him because uh, we were outside and uh, we did... Uh, you know, the stuff outside, it was pretty quick. It was like uh, 20 below where we were. So right after we finished something, everybody go inside of a, uh, a trailer. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time with him, but he seemed like a nice nice guy. Everybody seemed to like him. You know? That's like, uh, um, is it pretty cool to play bad guy like that? Yeah, it was fun. I, I just, uh, it's... Uh, I, I don't mind being a bad guy like that. That's uh, that's that's kind of cool, you know. And I, what I really liked is I like doing, even though I, I just had a small role in it, uh, The Rising Sun. That was by the same director that did The Wanderers. Mm. And I got to have, uh, you know, like Sean, Sean Connery beats me up. But it's like an honor, you know what I mean? Because man, uh, like my wife, uh, we we just got married, and uh, my wife didn't know she never saw a Bond movie, right? Oh, wow. So I bring her on the set, and I go, okay, you know. Uh, yeah, she's telling me, well, you know, you, okay, you know, when like, and I'm telling her the, the, the different movies, and she goes, no. What do you mean, no? Well, I, I didn't see that. All right, well, you know, when like Dr. No, what, what is that? I go, you, have you never seen a Bond movie? She goes, no. I go, you've never seen a fucking Bond movie. Are you fucking kidding me? How can you not see a Bond movie? What the hell's wrong with you? You know what I'm Yes, so, Steve. You see this man here? This man in the 60s, he was probably like the biggest star in the world. You know, I, and and I'm telling her all this, and she doesn't. She has no uh, like reference point. She's looking at him, and you know, she sees an older guy. But in his day, I mean, forget about it. You know, women probably you know went crazy wherever he went. You know? Well, don't feel bad because I only ever saw one Bond movie to this day. So <laughs> yeah, we we give Steve no, a hard yeah. time. Which one? Which one? I've only I've only seen Goldfinger. It's the only one I've ever watched. Well, that's a really good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Man. But you put, you know, I mean, man, I grew up watching all that stuff. All those, like the Bond movies. I grew up watching, uh, I, I've seen all of them. I've seen the ones with Roger Moore. I've seen mm-hmm. the one with Roger Lazenby. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's Who's Roger Lazenby. Lazenby. Um, that's the Secret Service. Service. That's some yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah. The one I couldn't take would be with Pierce Brosnan. He just doesn't seem like a Bond. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Look, I, I think the man's a fine actor. Yeah. But I don't. He just, he's just not James Bond, in, in my he's opinion. A bit of, he's, uh, he's, he's a bit of a Ken doll. Yeah. Well, no, you know what was weird? I mean, I yeah, he was making out with some chick, right? And he has like this this uh, watch on or something. Like it's on his wrist, and like it slides all the way down to his, to his elbow, yeah. like his, like the back of his the, 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 his forearm is the same size as his wrist. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That was weird. And then he's running like the way he runs. He just. Uh, I don't know, it just kind of looked funny. I don't know, that's just me. Another bit of trivia yeah, is, is uh, when Sean Connery left in like 67 or whatever, and they were going to make yeah. Honor Majesty Secret Service, they got Timothy Dalton, but Timothy Dalton turned it down because he thought he would be too young to, to portray that character. Yeah, Timothy Dalton back in 67? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's 69. 69, yeah. That's a tough deal. You know, you, you know what I don't get? You know that uh, there was an actor that did... Uh, uh, the Highlander, not the movie, the TV show, uh, Adrian Paul. You remember him? Yeah. Yeah. Why that guy? Man, they should have they should have got that guy for Bond. He, he, he'd he have been perfect. Yeah. What do Don't you think? You think? I mean, the, he, what do you think of the new one? Uh, the, uh, is it uh, Daniel Craig? Well, uh, I just think that, I, I think that this is just, you know, you know, my opinion and five cents will get you yesterday's newspaper, but... Uh, <laughs> For me, I mean, for purely entertainment purposes, I think the guy does a good job. 
with the action and all that other stuff. But I think Bond, there's something like some kind of smart ass quality that Bond has. You know, where he's it's not suave. He, he, it's like a charisma thing. Like he's charming and he he knows how to talk to chicks and all that kind of stuff. That's part of Bond, you know what I mean? I, I don't th I think he's a little flat on that. That's just my opinion. I agree, I agree too. Mm -hmm. I, I think he does the other stuff really well, and it's the action's great. But but, but Bond Bond does more than that. Otherwise, it would be the whole thing would be a stunt match. You see, he the way he right. talks to people, the smart ass remarks, uh, stuff with chicks, how he's with how he's with girls. That's I mean, if you had a choice, right? Somebody said to you, "What would you rather be, Superman or James Bond?" You'd have to think about that for a while, wouldn't you? I'd rather be uh, Superman. I'd rather be James Bond. What? <laughs> So, uh, I don't know. I mean, but okay, why would I be Superman? Let me hear. Oh, okay. I don't know. James Bond can't do all that stuff Superman can do. Yeah, but then Superman goes and balls some chip, and you know, but it, you know, he shoots his body, he probably knocks your head right off. So, what the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell is that? Being Superman, if you can't get if you can't get chicks, I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have any problem with Lois that, Lane. That's not part of the whole Superman uh, thing. Like you, you can't be, you can't go around, you know, uh, you know, scoring. Uh, with chicks, because it's a Superman, you know? Well, you know, James but Bond is more romantic type than uh, Superman was, so... Well, yeah, but I mean, that's my point. But, I mean, he, yeah, but, I mean, the, the, but what's good is being uh, doing all that shit? You get, like, lift buildings and shit, but you can't, uh, you know... <laughs> well, yeah, that's true, I guess. Lois Lane's the only one that he can... Never mind. <laughs> I, I do notice something about James Bond movies. It's like... It's like they must have this round table of writers, and a lot of them come up with these great, really great ideas, and then you got this one. A <laughs> round table of writers, like the, like, uh, like the fucking, uh, the Algonquin round table, right? The yeah, figure right. out the Yeah, but, but then you get the yeah. other writer, you know, let's put a slide whistle when the car goes to flip, you know? It's like... <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I just think that, you know, given it to, I think most guys would, would have to think about a while about telling. What would you rather be? Well... Superman, you get to fly and like you know lift buildings and like kick the shit out of just about anybody you want. But then you know you don't do so good with uh, with uh, girls. You know you can't really. Mm. Well, can't when it really, comes uh, to getting girls, when it comes to getting girls, I guess yeah, I'd be Bond. I guess. Like and I think yeah, fly, flying yeah, around yeah, and lifting yeah. up cars. It's to me that would get old after about a day. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a week. From well, now. yeah, but you could do more than that. Like you could walk someplace, you know, you could do whatever you want. Nobody can stop you. So you yeah, think about yeah. it that way. They, they can shoot at you. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah. Unless, unless there's Krypton or something. Yeah, you know what tonight, I mean? Yeah. Right. Why would they? If this is your weakness, why would you fucking broadcast it to everybody that this is your weakness? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand the reasons for it in the story, but it's like, why would you go, yeah. oh, yeah, you know, see this here, this green stuff? Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't do me any good. Why would you tell people that, you know? Well, I, I was, I was, say, I was saying that. Reeves. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. They'd, they'd shoot at him, and he'd just stand there, and then they'd run out of bullets, and they'd throw the gun at him, and he would duck. Oh, what you, I didn't say oh, that. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Here's something, too. It's like the actors that play... The actors that play Superman, it's like, this guy's really strong, right? So, like, you see him, like, in, in the um, the Christopher Lee, uh, uh, not not Christopher Lee, uh, what am I saying? Uh, um, Chris Reeves. Yeah. And he, he's, you know, he does that thing where he stiff arms the helicopter in the first Superman. Like, you know, he's mm -hmm. saving Lois Lane. And the helicopter's going, and he sticks his hand out. And he's, he, like, he, like, he stiff hands it like nothing. He's holding it. Yeah. You know, and he's looking at Lois Lane like, hey, man, ain't that cool? You know, he's just like floating <laughs> there, right? He gets the fucking thing down. And then later on, he's like trying to pull up his sock and he's straining. You know what I mean? Like, like nobody's thinking that. Just fucking stiff on the helicopter. And now your fucking sock is wrinkled and you bend it over. You got this strain on him. What are you looking at your face? What the hell is that? Yeah, hey, I'm doing what you were doing before. You know? <laughs> but, well, at least Superman didn't have his balls hit with that cat and eye tails or whatever. What was it? Remember that? You didn't have the what? Remember that he was being tortured and that guy was hitting his balls with some kind of thing. Torture. It was in the what? Casino Royale. Yeah, what was that in? Casino yeah, Royale. Casino Royale, the first one with Craig. They were like torture, hitting him with something on his balls. It's like, oh, at least Superman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to duplicate that thing with James Bond where in Goldfinger where he's he's got the, he's laying on the table. And the laser, the laser's going right at his fucking dick, and it's it's, oh, like, yeah. it's moving toward his dick. He goes, he goes like, you expect me to talk? 
and he goes, no, Mr. Bob, I expect you to die. It's <laughs> 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 what is nuts. So my wife, you know, she thinks I'm crazy because I, I like I keep watching these movies, you know. And she goes, how can you watch that stuff over and over and over? No, I just like it. So they had a, they had a lot of silly moments in Goldfinger that I don't get. Like, like what? They took, well, when, when uh, Goldfinger was had all those those uh, bad guys over, and he you know was showing them like what 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 is this, Mister Wonka? I mean, uh, Mister uh, Goldfinger. <laughs> oh, you mean the mob he guys? Up, he had the he had the mob guys in the, in, yeah. the, in his little area. He was explaining the whole process of how he's gonna uh, yeah. move all so the gold the one, the, Fort Knox. So the one guy doesn't want to do it, so instead of taking him back and shooting them, they do this elaborate thing where they put him in the trunk and take the car to the dang crusher and do all this stuff, and then uh, then they just he goes around and kills them anyway. And it's like, what are you, what are you doing? It's like you spent all that time explaining all that shit to him, and they just killed him. <laughs> yeah, and it, and then plus they got this five thousand pound Lincoln that they crush into a cube and they put it in the back of a little Ford Falcon Ranchero, and it doesn't do any. It's like what? It's still five thousand pounds. <laughs> they think too much into stuff. But you got you got to allow some. You got to you have to have some suspension of, of uh, uh, you know disbelief to enjoy these films. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to like old woman, you know, the skin suffocation, you know, and all the. Oh, the girl with all the gold painting on her. Yeah, I mean, you got to have. Well, I think that's possible though. Like, if there's a certain kind of uh, uh, paint, I think you can get. Uh, uh, definitely ill from it. I think that's what happened to, um, you, you know, the movie Wizard of Oz, right? Uh, originally, uh, Buddy right, Epson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he was painted with some kind of silver uh, body paint, and yeah, I guess yeah. he had uh, some kind of re bad reaction or something happened with it, and he, well, got, what, he got... What it was is they had it in a powder, and he inhaled it, and it got in his lungs. So then when oh, the, yeah. the new guy came, they they put it into a paste, and it was okay, didn't it? Oh, I thought his skin was allergic or something. No, he, he inhaled That's what I heard, it too. I heard that's what you just said. The skin, like, it, like when they yeah. when they covered his skin, it, they cut, it, like his skin didn't breathe right or something, yeah. and it, yeah. uh, like it could almost kill him. I, I don't know. I tell you, well, I used to go to Dragon Con, you know, in Atlanta, and I'd go in the parade. I, I dressed as this dragon, this gold like dragon uh with this like nine foot retractable wingspan and i would cover my skin with this uh metallic gold paint and oh. give me these nerve spasms the, the metallic stuff in it it would yeah. be like pure hell it was terrible yeah. you know so i can i can, it can mess with you especially the metallic stuff you, so you like all that uh you like all that sci-fi stuff what do you think of uh the writer robert e howard do you remember him you not know any of his works not really. I just like to dress up and make a fool of myself most. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Oh, at well, that. see, I don't have to dress up to make a fool out of myself. I just gotta leave, leave the house. Hey, I'll do well, something you did stupid. On too. It's, it's you, not, they, had you, they had you dressing up huh? like a chick in the second one. Yeah. As I reminded uh, my fellow actors, you know, the reason this is funny is because it's me dressing up this way. If it was yeah. you, nobody would notice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my that was my reaction to that one. You know. Oh, I yeah. thought but, it was uh, fine. I, I, I thought it was fine. You know, it, it's like no. You know what was fucking weird? I mean, the the the, the uh, they they put these eyelashes on me that uh, mm -hmm. they glued them on with some kind of shit, and like the eyelashes, uh, the eyelashes are heavy for your eyelids because yeah. your eyelids aren't used to lifting anything but their own weight. So it's like you got little yeah. weights on your eyelids, and eventually you get tired. Like your eyelids get tired, you know, from <laughs> opening your eyes. And I, I remember asking uh, the makeup lady, her name was Marie Del Russo. She, this lady was pretty cool. She dated Elvis. Well, no, she didn't date Elvis. She dated Frank Sinatra, but she worked on uh, Elvis pictures. So she was really like a knockout when she was young. Yeah. Anyway, she, she was telling me about this different makeup and stuff they have. I says, listen, you have any of that old makeup that, that the actresses used in the 40s? Like it's... Um, uh, you, you, you put it on your mouth and it doesn't run like when you eat. They had this this stuff. Now they, I guess you can buy it, but back then you couldn't. Uh, in like in in 1980, whatever that was, they, they didn't have anything like that. But they had it in the 40s, though. It's just I have some of that, and it's like you you paint it on. So she would paint. She painted my lips. She got to use this shit to take it off. This way we oh, eat. Wow. Right? The, you eat like a donut. You have coffee. The shit doesn't come off all, all over every place. Hey, it's really hard being a chick, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you I can imagine. Man. They gotta. They shave their legs, right? They shave their armpits, shave oh, yeah. stuff. They put on lipstick. They put, they do their hair. They do all this shit just to walk outside. 
yeah. And then, it, 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 you know, I mean, I mean, fuck, if I was a chick, nobody'd date me, man. I'd be one of the chick. I'd be hairy and fucking smelly and I wouldn't stay. I wouldn't do anything. I'd be looking You'd at be a hippie. Uh, yeah. No, I, no, I wouldn't be a hippie, but I'd be, I'd be something nobody would want to date, that's for sure. <laughs> that's what the comedic value was about having you dress up like that, though. I mean, it was it's something you don't expect, and it was hilarious. Well, it's funny when certain people do it, like, but certain people, like I say, like I'm saying it to these guys, like some of our guys, it's like, well, hey, dude, you know, if you put on a wig and a dress, nobody will know. I mean, nobody's going to really pay any attention. To They'll think you're a chick, you know? So it's not, it's not uh, putting the stuff on. It's just who, 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 who puts it on, you know? You say like if Roger Wilson had gotten dressed up, it wouldn't have worked with him. Well, I don't know, Roger, Roger Wilson. I don't know. But I mean, uh, I don't know who was, who was the person that was probably Wyatt that was making fun of me. Was it? Okay, yeah. uh, Wyatt always made fun of me. He, he just uh, he just was a ball breaker. He, he constantly broke balls. Yeah, he was a good guy. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of uh, of, of uh, Jeff Dream. Remember that in the early Beverly Hillbillies with oh, Jeff yeah. Dream had his sister. Jeff oh Dream. Well, yeah, that was that was oh yeah. What were they thinking, man? Was, <laughs> I thought well, Jeff Dream was kind of hot, but that's never mind. Yeah, I've said too much. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, that man, you know, Max Max. Max Baird Jr. Max Baird Jr. He's a yeah. big dude. You seen oh, one yeah, of the, yeah. the autograph shows that we that we that we do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a big dude, man. Yeah, he's he, big. He's a big he was guy. A big guy he was, back then. Yeah, he don't look much like a. Uh, he don't look anything like a woman. Uh, that's uh, that's for shit, sure. Yeah, yeah I know? said too much. You know, how about that tow truck? How'd they get it to dance up and down? In the okay, never mind. <laughs> well, they had a whole bunch of things where it was tied on to shit, and then they had different shots of it. it yeah. You know, I didn't really pull it. The thing that was out in the swamp, what they built, was just built on a frame, like a like a like a framework. It was just mm-hmm. an, an exterior. The, <laughs> on the inside, there was nothing in it. The interior mm-hmm. of Porky was filmed in a bar in in in, um, in Miami, in a bar that was clown. Yeah. So the shots you see, they just tied that on something, and it meant you know the the, the truck and it went up and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah you know the movie has its errors, like you hear. Uh, at the end of the movie, when Scott Columbia, the guy that plays Brian, he's driving out of the parking lot with Cyril O'Reilly. It's like he shifts into like, yeah, he shifts like eight times. <laughs> yeah. It's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> how many gears is this thing? Like, it's got some super transmission in it that nobody knew about back then. Yeah. I didn't just, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. so they, just, they must have made Porky's just out of a bunch of just like little plywood pieces and stuff, huh? Yeah. The, the outside of it, yeah, it was just bare bone. They, it was like a like a tubular metal frame. The the the, the structure, and they just tacked that stuff on. The, the stuff that was expensive were the neon signs. Uh, the get it at Porky's oh, yeah. those signs. They oh, were expensive, yeah. and they were uh, destroyed in the in the uh, oh. you know when the when the, uh, the 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 building was pulled down. Yeah, it was destroyed. That was expensive. Yeah. Then they had to build new ones for the riverboat. Yeah, that would have been collector's items. The, I, I would imagine. I would imagine it would be. Yeah, the riverboat. Mm. I guess that was a whole different setup because that was uh, all uh, uh, destroyed. But the interior of that uh, boat. Uh, where where did we do that? I'm trying to remember the interior. Oh no, they used they they used the boat. The boat itself. They did use the boat because I remember that. Uh, I mean, for the interior, that it wasn't uh, done separately. They it was like a hundred. I don't know. It was like 120 degrees in there. They, 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 they. We did some shooting during the day, and it's supposed to be oh, a night set, so they cover all the windows. Mm-hmm. And then there's like all these mm-hmm. people in there, and it's summer, and it's hotter than fuck in there, man. Oh, yeah, you know, man. You, you're sweating like it. Yeah, and it, and it's oh boy. The one thing about Florida, I just I, I can't used to the, the heat. I'm not a heat person. Yeah, I'm the same way. I live here. It drives me. I hate the summertime here. It's like keep me in the oh, air God. conditioning. I'm the only one like the but what's the point? I mean, you got an air condition, but you're inside, right? So you take a shower, yeah. Yeah. and you're all clean, and you go out. The m- moment you step outside, you, you, yeah. you, you, your shirt's stuck to your skin, and then you get in a, in a car, and a car's air conditioned. <laughs> yeah. You get out of the car, you sweat bullets. So by now, like, you already stink. You, you've been out, like, 15 minutes, <laughs> and you stink like, you, you know, you stink like some whole bum. It's like, hey, what's the, why, who am I kidding? Why am I taking a shower? Yeah. I mean, after yeah, 15 minutes, who's been at all? I'll, I'll just, <laughs> you know, just fucking leave the shirt on I had on yesterday. What am I going to do, offend somebody, you know? Uh, <laughs> and it bugs you guys, those no-seams. 
Oh, oh my gosh. They're they're terrible here and they bite. They bite the crap out of you. And they're everywhere. What? They're, they're, here, they're here until the summer, and the mosquitoes eat them. But then you got the mosquitoes that take their place. Yeah, man. When we came down on the set, the the, the 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 fucking mosquitoes were warming up like a bunch of fucking uh, oh, you know B seventeen bombers, man. They were warming up like waiting for us to get there. You can hear them like you know. And uh, I heard all kinds of shit like what what took away and like. Mm. Uh, they, they were saying that skin's so soft. If you put that on, it uh, it keeps them away. Oh wow. I hear that, but then I don't have any gay mm-hmm. ladies out in this area. I live, so. <laughs> no, but we went to the makeup people that have have all that, you know, those uh, creams and all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. So you put it on, and it, it it didn't do. It was like a cocktail, man, for for them. It's like they, they they're having like a like a perrotiche before they dine, you know. Only thing that works and, for me, it's a hundred percent deet stuff it, that keeps them. That up. didn't work. We used that. That was like you got that. That was man, man to them. That was like drinking tab or fresca. That shit, man. <laughs> before the, the the only thing that worked. I, I, this, this was true. I had a buddy of mine that was a ranger, an army ranger, and he uh, he had been in, in jungles and things like that. And he he was telling me that the, you know the army has a some kind of a. Uh, mosquito repellent that they issued, he says, but none of that shit works. He says, what guys would do is, he says, they'd get a book of matches, like paper matches, and they would suck the sulfur off the matches. And, uh, he, as he's telling me, like, as he's telling me this, we're in a truck, right? And, uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking to him, right? And I got, a, like, a cigarette, and I'm listening to him, and he goes, okay. Women's are all the people are walking by, and he goes, what you want to do? He says, you want to put the whole thing in your mouth and suck it, see? You suck all the, you know, <laughs> he's telling me all this kind of shit. People are walking by, they're looking at us, and I don't get it. I'm going, what are they looking at? They're going to hit me. But if you suck all that stuff off the uh, the matches, it goes in your bloodstream, comes out on your skin, and they leave you alone, and it works. It worked for me. I didn't get, I didn't get bit anymore. Well, how many you know? matches do you have to suck? <laughs> the whole pack. you got to suck whole the whole pack. Yeah. Whole pack. See, that didn't, that, didn't, that didn't really roll out that good, did it? You, uh, <laughs> you got to suck the whole pack, the whole pack of pa- uh, the whole pack of paper matches. That's what I did. Suck them all. And you know, you never know what this because this guy used to play. He used to play tricks on me too. You know, like he yeah. would tell he would tell me something, and I, it would it would turn out to be bullshit. We play practical jokes on each other. So I'm thinking this could be some kind of fucking bullshit thing. And hey, did you suck the, the sulfur off the matches? Yeah, I did. Ah, oh, man, I was just kidding. You know, but no, he was <laughs> Our Tony, our Tony here does that to me all the time. Yeah, he'll, you know he'll tell me something, I'll I'll believe it. You know, so, you know. Uh, I did this. You, gotta, you gotta temper everything that this guy said. You gotta temper yeah. it with, uh, you know, okay, is he is he trying to is he trying to get me? Is he trying to you know is he telling me the truth? Or, you know, yeah. Exactly. But uh, I was like, I, I was like desperate, man. It was it was that bad down there. Yeah, I was ready to try yeah. anything. I, what are you talking? You, know, you said it worked. You're mentioning. Huh? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I did. On Die Hard too, so it was actually cold because usually in the movies, if it's supposed to be cold, it's hot, and it's supposed to be hot, it's cold. Yeah, when you're making it was it, it, it was so cold. Uh, there was uh, there was an actor. His name was Art Evans, and uh, he's in one of the um, he's in the scenes uh, where we were, and he had a uh, like a not a stunt double, but a, a stand-in. And this poor guy was out on the set, and man, this guy was blue. He was, they wouldn't let him leave where he was, and he tried to get a cup of coffee. Leave, so I got him a cup of coffee, right? And, mm-hmm. uh, like, they're calling me to, to, to go in. They're going to they're gonna do something. We're going to do something. I said, let me favor. Will you watch it? So I gave him my cup of coffee. I came back, like, maybe a minute, two minutes later, and I went to drink the coffee, and I got smacked in the nose by a block of ice. Like, the whole top of the coffee froze. Oh, oh my God. That's how, that's how cold it was. But I liked the cold. I was yeah. okay. I had a, like a T-shirt on and I had a little uh, plastic jacket. I was okay for like basically the whole day. And when it was time to go home, I, I, like I started to feel it. Wow. You know, and uh, I just went, I went home and I went in my, well, my, my hotel room and I just took, uh, got some coffee, put a little, put a little bit of brandy in the coffee and I was good to go. Oh, wow. You know. Humidity is something else because uh, it makes. I mean, if it's eighty degrees with uh, with the high humidity, it, you, you know, you, you feel like it's like one hundred twenty degrees. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and if it's if it's fifty five with that high humidity, it feels like it's thirty five. Just... Yeah, I guess it's uh, climate. You got to get used to the climate. Uh, we we spent like I guess a total of a year and a half in Florida with all the uh, 
It was the three movies. You know, mm -hmm. we spent like a year and a half together. So uh, well, did, did you make there. them all at once, pretty much? Well, the, the, yeah. no, 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 no. We didn't make them all at once. Uh, yeah. We made one, and then like uh, we made them over the years. They were going to do a fourth one, but that didn't that didn't pan out. Uh, oh, that'd that be kind of hard to do. One. I mean, what would you do after you guys graduated? I mean, that'd be difficult. Yeah. Well, they had yeah, uh, all the wacky adventure plan for us as 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 adults. They had a oh. wacky adventure. They just didn't. Like they just the didn't happen. Uh, well, uh, that's interesting you mentioned that. It would have been, uh, something like that. Yeah, something like that. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And it just didn't, uh, didn't work. And then, you know, the time for that kind of stuff, uh, passes. You know, there's like time for a certain kind of movie and yeah. then the time passes. And like the, like the genre, mm -hmm. the teen sex comedy, uh, I guess we were the first. I, I don't know of any yeah, other. Yeah, movie. I think so. Yeah. Animal House was similar yeah. to our movie. And you know, it was funny when we were doing a movie, John Belushi, I don't know how, but he got the number of the house where we were staying. And he was calling to ask, ask how I was doing. I mean, he was something. He would, you know, hmm. That's call neat. up and want to know if he could help you with anything, if you needed anything. He's just yeah. a really great guy. Yeah. And wow, nobody man. knew who he was. Um, he wouldn't tell anybody, you know, and he would, he would talk to somebody, like, and get them on the phone. And they talked to him for like an hour. Wow. Um, and like, um, you know, um, he got my mom on the phone once, right? Uh, we were in Colorado and he's, he's motioning to me, like to give him the phone. Cause he had the keys to the production office. So he would be going there and make long distance phone calls. So I'm talking <laughs> to my mother. So he, he motions over there. He, he would get the keys. He goes, you know, to the phones, man. You know, like they call all the creation, you know? So my mom goes, my mom's talking to him. He's talking to him for a long time. And he gives me back the phone and he's sitting there and she goes, who is that? Well, Mom, that's that's uh, that's John Bushy. Who? <laughs> he's, a he's a comedian, Mom. He's on Saturday Night Live. What what what, what is that? Who? What, what, what the hell is that? And he's dying. He's he, he he's just laughing his ass off. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to make my mother explain to her who he is. She didn't have a clue. But she was <laughs> she found him interesting enough to talk to him for like 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 a half an hour, an hour. She was just on the phone talking to him. John's really seemed like a funny guy. I would like to have met him. <laughs> You remember all the skits he did on Saturday Night Live? He remembered all the lines. I, I, I don't know how he did it. He remembered the lines. He, wow. he said to him, hey, do that stuff. Uh, you guys are, uh, you remember you guys were on that pirate ship, the Raging Queen? Hey, do that. Do that. <laughs> you know, he knew the dialogue, the whole fucking thing. He would have you rolling just, just from the, from the, I go, how the hell, you know, how the hell do you remember this shit? Yeah, really? Because you've done so much of it. How could you possibly remember? But he did. He remembered it all. I bet you, you know? couldn't recite. Incredible. So you probably couldn't recite any lines from Porky's. No. <laughs> I honestly, I can't. I, I, I can recite. You know what's stupid? I can recite lines from other movies, but I can't recite. I, I don't remember the lines from Porky's. I don't remember the, the, the lines from. Uh, how about how about uh, Princeton? They fucking suck. How about how about what? How about what? Was it Princeton? He fucking sucks. Okay, but see, that was something else because some of that, some of the, you gotta understand, some of the lines in that movie we supplied ourselves. They weren't written. They weren't scripted. We just threw them in. Some of the scenes that you see, uh, some of the stuff that we did with it, like the egg scene in the beginning where Dan Monahan's breaking the egg and all that, we we got an idea, right? And we would go to Bob and we would say to him, hey, Bob, you know, we got this idea because something in the script was there. And like when we tried it, it didn't really work mm -hmm. like it was scripted. Like if you read it, it seems funny. But then when you actually do it, it isn't. So yeah. we go, hey, Bob, we got this idea. And he go, well, okay, well, you know, um, you know, let me see it. He would never... He would never ever go. No, I'm not interested in it or anything like that. He would always let you show him what what you had because maybe you know, there's a chance that it was good. Yeah. And some of the stuff we showed him, he goes, no, no, no. But some of the stuff he, he let in. So he, he actually filmed it. He got angles on it. He filmed it in that, one of those things he had uh, seen. And uh, some of the other stuff, a lot of the lines, we just threw lines in. We just made up lines, and they they stayed in the movie. Some of them didn't. He didn't like them. Mm -hmm. If we said something that was off or something, he didn't think uh, was, but was part of the character. He would, uh, he'd go, no, 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 we don't want that. Don't, uh, don't say that. Don't, don't say this here. You know. So yeah, it seems like it seems like it's really good, and I'll let you, you know, give you a little creative license and do a little thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, give you well, a little. Bob wasn't. Uh, he wasn't above. You know, he the way he had it in his mind, he had a very good idea of what he was doing. And he was the boss. There's no question about mm -hmm. that. He was the boss on the set. You know, he knew, you know, what he wanted, but mm -hmm. he was willing to look at, uh, stuff you had too. Some of the mm -hmm. stuff, like, uh, we showed him, it just wasn't funny. Yeah. So he was like, no, no. And some of the stuff he had, uh, we think was funny. Hi. 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 H
doing it. My name is Minnie. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Why did they call you Meat? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Wendy Williams told me I should ask you. Well, she did, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah? Why do they call you Meat? Because you're so big? <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of. Not sort of. Why? You really want to know? Yes. Okay, come on, I'll show you. Me, 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 wait, 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 wait. She's only a freshman. Yeah, but after this, she'll be an instant senior. But, 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 me, listen, if you get suspended again, you'll never get that scholarship to Princeton. Now think about that. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. No cigar. Can't do it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> hey, be sure to catch the uh, next episode of The Wrong Channel. We'll pick up and uh, continue with our talk with uh, Tony Ganos, Meat from Porky's. So are we doing, like, a part two of this, or are you going to, like, play segments in a different show? What are you doing? Yeah, I can do both. Well, I mean, is the next episode going to be a part two and going to be the all all Tony Ganios, or is it Ganios? Yeah, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. What, I don't know what to do. What are you doing? I was confused to begin with. We had two Tonys on the show. Yeah. 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 Well, you didn't get to my question. Is this going to be part two of Tony Ganios? Or Probably. We I think gonna, gonna, what we're going to do, I think we're going to have... Uh, We'll have some good clips from for future shows. Well, then that's what you should have said at the beginning. Instead of stay tuned to, for the next episode for the rest of our. What do you think I am? <laughs> professional here? What do you think? That's I like you're starting it out. <laughs> you think I know what I'm doing here or what? Well, no. You you you've got Tony listening to it, and then he's going to be thinking, okay, you know, I've got another one to hear, you know, and then maybe he'll shut it off right there, and then he'll be expecting it next week. And then it's just going to have a, a certain clips of, of Fine. Join us next time on The Wrong Channel when we'll play pieces of the Tony Ganyos. Well, yeah. what we had pla- practiced is that you were going to say, stay tuned for the, stay tuned to future episodes of The Wrong Channel for more, uh, uh, more moments with Tony Ganyos. <laughs> Who died and left you, director? I'm just saying what we agreed on before you started recording. Are you being Terry Summer now? Or are you doing... <laughs> don't, don't... <laughs> hurt my feelings and stuff. What do you expect from a cartoon character? Jeez, now you're being all, uh, uh, what do you call it? Dimensionalist. Well, you're the one that thought Tony Ganyos was going to be Meathead. I, that was because I had a bad connection with, uh, what's his name? D- Dull. Stay tuned to the wrong channel. We'll have, uh, future... Fuck. <laughs> Stay tuned to future episodes of the wrong channel. Why don't you say it? You try and say it. All right. Here you go. Stay tuned for future episodes of the wrong channel with more moments with Tony Ganyos. So if if you if you've enjoyed what you've heard, there's more of it, a, a lot more. And help me out, Steve. I don't know what, where to go with it. You're, you're saying better than I did. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah, we're gonna next few weeks we'll have pieces of Tony. Huh? Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's it, what having two Tonys next time? When you get a guest with with the same name as one of us, you, 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 huh? I think we need name tags or something. Yeah. Name tags or uh, I don't know, doggy tags. Really? So how, how how do name tags work on the radio? This is the wrong channel. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Mr. Dixon. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out.